Hey, this is Mead here, and today we're going to continue on with our painting journey and talk about more ways to begin landscapes. Um, so far, I haven't demoed a landscape, I don't think, um, with an under sketch to it. So this this landscape is going to be in, in monochrome with black, white, and, and yellow ochre. So what I figured I would do for a sort of sketching method is take um, a relatively small to mid um, round brush and sketch out the basic shapes of the landscape um, just using the yellow ochre because it'll get covered up. It's no big deal. Um, and we can kind of explore the, the basis of the landscape here. And this one's small, it's about eight by 10, done in acrylic. Um, so the other thing too is, um, I'm not showing really the reference on this one, um, which is fine, doesn't, doesn't really matter. There's not really room to show it anyway. Um, and uh, the one thing that I'm doing that you can't really see without the reference is that I'm changing the point of view entirely. So the um, the reference photo is taken up on top of this cliff uh, looking down at the ocean in this little bay and uh, I decided that I didn't really like that composition because it was going to be uh, da looking down really far and it was going to be a little bit awkward. Instead I thought it'd be more interesting to shift the point of view as if you're on the um, on the shoreline kind of looking up and seeing these two big, um, big rocks kind of sticking up out of the ocean. So I thought that'd be more interesting because it would turn it into like, um, basically four large and medium shapes, um, with the sky background and the, the water would be really low. Um, so that means that I have to kind of like make up what the angle would look like and use a little bit of linear perspective here to create these um, cliff sides on the right and left. And then I also have to kind of figure out how this foreground is going to look because it's going to change basically being on the uh, edge of a beach or a dune or something like that. And when you're doing an under sketch like this, really all you're looking for is sort of a layout of, of big and medium shapes, you're looking for overlap, you're looking for any compositional problems. And then as soon as that's done, um, you can go right in and start working on filling in the major shapes. Um, I know that the light is going to come from the upper right, um, more or less directly um, upper right, and so it's going to cast a shadow. So I know that this uh, cliff side on the right is going to be fairly dark and I'm just going to go ahead and cover that with a dark. Um, it's probably too dark at this point, but that's okay. Um, we can just come back and adjust it later in future, uh, in future layers. And my intent eventually would be to subdivide this maybe into a couple overlapping layers potentially. Um, or um, bring more detail into it. But for now, <clears throat> I'm just going to paint this flat. I try not to leave um, any of the paper or canvas showing through. And um, I try not to make it so thick that it leaves a lot of physical texture that I would have to fight later. I'm using matte medium instead of water. That's really important. Um, that you use some kind of acrylic medium if you're using acrylic. <coughs> Water kind of chemically shreds acrylic and it makes it sort of clumpy. Um, again, there's uh, going to be a, a light and a shadow side. Primarily, um, this uh, freestanding rock is going to be in shadow. So I'm going in and blocking in all the shadows, paying attention to the shape, giving the shape a little bit more more uh, nuance than in the sketch. And then there'll be a little flex of light on it that I'll bring in later. It probably would have been, you know, smarter to begin with the uh, the sky, but that doesn't really matter too much. 
Um, you know, painting back to front is a really smart and efficient way, but you don't have to do it like that. Again, I'm always thinking about revisiting the shapes and angles that I chose in that initial sketch. Um, thing about those initial sketches is they have uh, a lot of life to them, but they may need refinement to make um, more uh, effective shapes in the subsequent layers. So here I'm just moving on. I'm using a pretty similar shadow for everything, um, mixing in ideas of the noton with the landscape. And then I have to be sure that to make these to make these things look like they're really sitting um, in the ocean or on the ground, I have to create a cast shadow from them. And then I know that the foreground is going to have uh, much darker values. It's, a lot of it's probably going to be in shadow, actually. Um, so I'm going to start bringing in this um, this dark. It's not going to be like perfectly black, but it's going to be darker than the middle ground here. Bring this into the foreground. And whenever I do anything like this, I'm just like kicking back and focusing on the edge. Um, all the stuff that's under the edge here doesn't really matter. I'm just going to paint it flat for now. I'll add more detail uh, later on. But for this first layer, all I'm really thinking about is creating an interesting edge with all these little plants and a little bit of vegetation that you know will be at the front of this uh, of this painting. And this is where. You know, I kind of want to slow down, you know, think really hard about how everything's overlapping before I make any kind of commitment or major brush strokes. Um, but I don't want to think too hard that it's paralyzing either. At some point I have to put the marks down. And you know, just kind of stay loose. Thinking about transitioning around those corners and um, creating good variety, good motion within this edge. This edge can afford to be fairly complex because everything around it is kind of simple. It's basically a simple plane of water and two simple large shapes on the left and right. There we go. And then I need to mix up kind of uh, a lightish color over here for the left. And I've used uh, a little bit of light gray mixed in with some of that yellow ochre. Um, I kind of did basically a noton sketch uh, where I've plotted out the shadows. But you know now I can just go in more directly for the colors that I want out of this monochrome. And on the first layer, you know, it's probably going to be, uh, the color's probably going to be a little off, a little too light, a little too dark, maybe the wrong color temperature, but that's okay. My main job right now is to uh, separate all the shapes from each other as I cover all the paper. Once the white is covered of the paper, then it's going to be easier to make, um, you know, color and value decisions. I know I say that all the time, but that's really important, you know. My uh, my first drawing teacher in college, he used to say that um, you know ninety percent of drawing is covering the paper, and in a lot of ways I think that's that's kind of right. You know, most of the most of the work is just covering the paper. Once the paper is covered, then you can play around with um, 
mark making and um, and all your shape design and and your composition, you know, and it's also a good reminder not to overthink it, um, just to go in there and get things covered and work it out as you go along. Without a blue in this, you know, we're we're going to use basically varying grays um, to block in the blue of the sky and the and the aqua colors in the uh, in the water. You know, black is a little bit cool. I think all the colors up to now have had some yellow in them, and I don't think this has much. You know, it's just not. When you're trying to keep things cooled down, you don't put a warm color in the mixture. You gotta make sure that you get the correct kind of contrast ranges that you want when you put in the sky. So, you know, what I think is the sea is really far background, the sky is really far background. So that's gonna be my my most like obvious anchor for um, a relationship um, between values in the background. So I need to make sure those hit. You know, the contrast range between any of these rocks in the sky isn't quite as important as the separation and background areas. And again, this is another way to start a painting, you know? There's many, many ways that you can begin. Um, you could begin with a noton, you could begin black and white, you can begin in monochrome like this with a sketch, you could, you could avoid using a sketch, you could use pencil to sketch it out, um, and each time I do a demo, I like to kind of do something slightly different to begin so that you, you can figure out something that you like and you can figure out a way that, that is effective for you to begin paintings. And here again, I'm keeping the paint flat, I'm keeping the edges relatively sharp, I'm not going for soft blended edges at the moment because I'm still just covering the paper and I have, don't really care about this, the end style yet. Right now I'm just kind of doing the block in, doing the layout. I think if you can get a good block in, it makes everything easier. Um, you, know, you, want, you want it to look cool in the end, but I feel like if you're if your block in doesn't look cool and doesn't have things going for it, then the rest of the painting's not gonna work out too well. You know? And I mean, you know, this isn't maybe like the coolest block in ever, but it's decent enough to, you know, to wanna bring a little bit further and bring it into the middle stages, maybe even finish it, you know? And the other thing that's nice about working small and on paper like this is you don't really have to finish the painting. You can just kind of like, leave it halfway done and chalk it up as a study. You know, really what we're after in terms of learning is um, just trying out some stuff and and getting a few concepts nailed down. Um, you know, once you get all these concepts nailed down, then you can really start to think about um, what you want your paintings to look like in the in the end result. So now we've finished sort of stage one, which is that initial block in, and now we have to go in and kind of start refining and making, making some changes. Um, the first major change that I that I see that that's like really obvious is that that light side of the left rock was um, way 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 too dark. So I want to come in and and lighten that up significantly. So to really see that that light hitting these planes. And I want to find places to sneak light onto this rock here that 
is largely in shadow because the because of the shape and angle of it. Just catch some light around the top and edge on the right side. One of the things that I noticed is that the shadows don't really make sense yet. Um, and the you know, right side cliff isn't really casting a shadow at all. So it's just sort of floating there, which is a little bit weird. And there ha hasn't been a shadow on the cliff from this uh, rock on the left, so we need to actually kind of bring that up and get some shadow into the into the cliff over here. Then, you know, it's always going to pay to just revisit value relationships, bring things around, change angles and so on. And then, of course, I got to get this shadow of the cliff line in there as well. The other weird thing is that if you put the shadow there and it's not the exact right thing to make perfect logical internal consistency, um, that's okay. Um, if it's if the shadow's there um, and it's serving to to ground that area in a sense of of existence and realism, it's doing its job. Again, we got to come back to this uh, this light yellow on all of the the sunny side of our middle ground here. Yeah, and this is about Picking the right kind of contrast range. And revisiting any of the shapes and making any changes that we need to make. Tweaking the edges, making sure the shape um, stays the way we want it to. And I always think it takes um, it may take a few tries to get the value of this and the color of it kind of right and, and operating the way that you want it. And this is a more complex approach, of course, than painting in grayscale because we're also thinking, we're thinking about the foreground, middle ground, and background. We're thinking about, you know, dark, medium, and light. And we're thinking about, you know, color saturation and color temperature you know we could think this yellow could be really bright the yellow could be really vibrant it could be really um it could be not very saturated and then we're also thinking you know the yellow warms things up the gray and black cool thing down cool things down so we have to think in um in many more ways than we do if we're just doing a grayscale painting we're thinking you know we're thinking on a couple more um, different levels too. I figured there'd be a lot of like 
um, waves and surf in this area coming in. So I want to get some brighter values into that. As if there's some waves kind of splashing up all over the place. Then what I want to do is get some like local um, color established. So within these rocks, there are kind of like various uh, bands that show the geologic development as it's eroded away. So we can use those uh, both for perspective and to build inter interest. So these lines are basically parallel to the ground, um, but organic. So we can immediately begin to treat those as if they're going back towards um, an organically located vanishing point. But then it also breaks up the shapes a little bit more and gives you um, different ways to differentiate each shape and form. And for layout, you know, this might be going a little bit beyond layout, but um, this is a good sort of like, you know, last stage to work within before you kind of run to the finish of the layout. Um, after this, you'd want to go in and start working and building out a further color range and, and further value range as you uh, as you head towards the end of the end of the painting. So overall, you know, this is nearing the end of the of what we call the layout stage. And here we can start lifting some values into the in towards the middle using uh, more subtle contrast ranges for the bands. We can also think about um, bringing in like warm and cool within shadow areas as well. Um, and that's going to add a lot of like interest and dimension to this, to this layout. Yeah. And you can see some of this will be done texturally. Some of it flat You can begin to add brush strokes and use mark making how you want to use it. Start thinking ahead into how you want this to look in the end. So if you like this video and uh, you're still watching, um, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment. I always get back. Um, if you have suggestions for future videos, I'm open to it. Thanks for watching and I appreciate your time. Catch you on the next one.